I'd now like to introduce uh, Kirsten Conrad. We've been lucky enough in this area to have her as our extension agent since 2007. She has a wealth of horticultural experience and knowledge in addition to her multiple horticultural degrees. She is a committed teacher and joins us today to teach us about spotted lanternfly. Kirsten. Thank you. I just want to say welcome to those of you who are here today on this beautiful day. I, um, I do um, um, work here in the Arlington office of Virginia Cooperative Extension, and it's located in the Fairlington Community Center. And uh, Julie will put the link for that address in the chat box. But we have a variety of services available to you, including public education that's done through the Master Gardener program. Um, we have a help desk for identification of insects and, um, and, and plant problems. Uh, we have a soil test uh, kits for you and lots and lots of good um, things like seeds. We have seeds we can give away to you if you're a gardener. Um, and um, we are the uh, connection, if you will, to the um, state land grant colleges of Virginia Tech and Virginia State University who, who offer specialists to help support the work that we do. Today, we're talking about spotted lanternfly, um, which we are going to need to become more aware of. And we're going to talk about an insect that is non-native, uh, it is native to China, and it was first detected in 2014 in Pennsylvania, where it is believed to have come in from China on a shipment of stone. It is a pest of numerous cultivated and wild hosts, and it can cause serious damage to apples, grapes, stone fruit, landscape trees, and much more. It will be a nuisance pest for us here in, in an urban areas, uh, but nevertheless, we need to be worried about how people are using pesticides to control it, and of course the damage that they may do to our own home landscapes. It is originally from China and East Asia uh, and India. It's native to that. It's invasive in Korea in 2006, and um, it is essentially a plant hopper, a very large one that, um, that does the damage by sucking plant juices, the sap from the plants it inserts a long um, 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 mouthpiece into the thin bark trees and feeds on the sap of those trees. In doing so, it causes damage to plants and we'll talk about all of that as we go along here. We're gonna start with the significance of spotted lanternfly and talk about the host um, and the life cycle of that particular insect. We're gonna talk about the controls um, and what you can do to help prevent um, your landscape plants as well as the spread of this, um, this invasive non-native insect. Uh, I'd like to share with you some of the resources that Extension has, and this is perfect for people that are in Virginia, but your local Extension office in wherever you're coming from today um, does have resources about all manner of uh, insects, invasive and native, and of course, what other agencies in Virginia are doing. The um, spotted lanternfly is uh, a beautiful insect. Um, it is, it's, a, it's a gorgeous rose-colored, um, dun-colored um, wings um, that when they open up, um, have red, a red, sort of red underwings. Its normal resting position is in an upright folded wing position. And when it flies, the adult flies, you can see that red. It is so beautiful, in fact, that People are making money making jewelry out of it. Here's a pair of earrings and here's a, pair, here's a pin um, that folks are selling on the internet that you can find yourself if you go looking for spotted lanternfly jewelry. <laughs> um, you can see the beautiful red underwings and we'll see some more pictures here of the adult wings. The spotted lanternfly was initially found in Pennsylvania in 2014. It was found in Berks County and uh, in just one county, and it has not spread since then. And Southeast Pennsylvania is generally infested uh, through out to the middle, from the middle of the state um, westward into the middle of the state northward. Um, in 2018, it appeared in Winchester area of what, Virginia. So it's a good hitchhiker, and it has traveled um, both dead and alive on train cars and stone shipments. 
Um, it's traveled as hitchhikers and trucks, cars, and even produce shipments. Last year, a dead one was found um, by a boy in Kansas who won a prize at the state fair. You might remember that, which shut off big alarm bells in Kansas for sure. It was interesting that he correctly identified it and won a blue prize for his display. We also found a dead one here in Arlington um, in a produce package that was um, um, obviously had been grown um, in an area that had been infested. So it, the, they hitchhike very, very readily. Here's um, a picture of the Winchester area. And you can see that the initial area of infestation in Winchester was north of the city in a one square mile area. This was particularly um, worrisome because since then, since 2018, the insect has traveled from that one square mile area um, all the way down to the Shenandoah Valley. Um, the adults that have been found, the, by the way, the um, purple spots are positive identification where they have found um, spotted lanternfly and traps that have, have been set. And the um, the black is where there is negative. They have a trap up, they monitor in the trap, but there's no record of the insect in that location. This is um, a, a rather serious business because it has now generally traveled as far as eastward, um, as far as Prince William and Fairfax County, and southward they have found uh, the positive um, findings in North Carolina um, as far east as the corner of Ohio. The monitors of these traps have measured both adults as well as immatures that have been found. And um, in the um, time since 2018, they have found 56,000, almost 57,000 adults and total immatures found a total 129,000 about. And this is of concern because um, we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. Uh, the ones that happen to stumble into a trap um, reflect only a portion, portion of what is available out there. The problem has become so severe that the regulatory body who oversees agriculture in Virginia, the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, has established a quarantine in three counties that are circled by red in the picture. These are areas in which um, certain um, requirements have to be met in order to ship goods out of those counties. And they have a regulatory exam examination and a permit process um, that has to be met in order to do business there. So this is a, um, a major problem that adds work time and adds cost to doing business. The population is small but growing in areas where, that are blue on this map. Um, you can see that Prince William County is the furthest east and the closest to us here. We have been uh, checking for uh, these insects here in Arlington and Alexandria um, since last year. And um, we have not found anything yet except for the dead ones that I mentioned. So um, the Prince William County um, has, is still indicated as a a small isolated population, but there was a Facebook post just last week um, uh, cheering on the efforts of four volunteers who found 68 masses uh, on, a, on a walkabout in one day. So um, this is of great concern. And again, not least of all, because what we can see, uh, which is on the trunks of trees and so on, is only a small portion of what's available out there. We are concerned also about the spread of the uh, insect throughout the United States. And you can see there's one population that's been, been found down here in far southern um, Virginia. And you can't see it real well, but these um, counties that have red dots in, there have been individual finds of them, but no infestation has been found to be um, established there. Now, the infestation criteria requires um, um, areas to have essentially a breeding population that um, is doing visible damage. So these areas that are in red are the areas that are circled in red, again, are the internal state quarantine areas 
uh, which have been um, said have been isolated um, through quarantine regulations. The big deal is that this insect seems to feed on nearly all of our favorite food crops. It also likes smooth bark trees, and not incidentally, it prefers Ilanthus or Tree of Heaven over everything else. Um, there's even been, it prefers it so much that it has been talked about and is used as a trap crop. In other words, all Ilanthus are removed except for smaller ones that can be sprayed and or treated and inspected um, from the ground. Um, because if you have a, a, a tree, a, a host range, a host, a not one of these other plants that they have been found on, adjacent to an Ilanthus tree, you will find Ilanthus, uh, you will find that spotted lanternfly on those trees as well. The host range is much wider with the young nymphs of the spotted lanternfly and as narrows as they mature. So um, in springtime, um, when they are first, in summertime, when they are first hatching out, they will have a much broader range than they do later on in the summer. It's worth mentioning too that this favorite crop of theirs, which is Tree of Heaven, Alanthus altissima, which is pictured here, is native to the same area uh, where these spotted lanternflies are native to. And that's China, Taiwan, um, and a little portion of India. It's no wonder that the spotted lanternfly prefer to feed on those particular, this particular host. Now, interestingly, even though this is a, a piece of research that data has been collected in the Winchester area by the gentlemen from Virginia Tech who are up here in the top um, left corner, 45 different hosts have been um, documented uh, to have spotted lanternfly on them. The E indication that is after some of these um, plants indicates that they have, only, they have found egg masses on the tree or the shrub, um, but they have not necessarily found feeding damage. The EO designation, which you see on Nellie Stevens Holly and some of the other ones like red oak and willow oak indicates they have found egg masses there, but they've only found egg masses. The E um, also indicates that the tree may not necessarily be a true host of spotted lanternfly, a feeding, you know, a feeding a supply plant. But the ones that have nothing after their names are ones that have been documented to, ha to have egg masses, um, but also be a plant that, be, that show feeding damage. Uh, feeding damage is um, um, such that it weakens the plant, but it doesn't necessarily kill it. And that is a problem because once the plant becomes weakened and you can see the picture on the left side, it has adults on the trunk of the tree, um, the um, sap running down the tree is because they have managed to pierce the bark and make a hole to the cambium level so that they can feed on the uh, plant sap. Um, this this is, a, is an injury to the tree and it makes it vulnerable to other kinds of pathogens. Virginia has um, positive vineyards uh, in Frederick County, and by positive vineyards, I mean places where um, the insect has been found on the grape vines. And this is a picture on the right of, of a grape vine that has um, the nymphs on it, late season nymphs. Um, and this is a very costly pest. The um, Fairfax County has found dead as a spotted lanternfly in Christmas tree shipments. Um, Researchers at Penn State University say that if the spotted lanternfly uh, infestation spreads across the entire state, which it is sure to do very quickly, it could drain an estimated $324 million from the economy annually and cost 2,800 jobs. This is the low end of the estimates that have included predictions of total cost in the vicinity of $554 million and 5,000 jobs lost. No can tell, but these, um, the cost of these include the cost of agricultural uh, crop controls. It includes jobs that are lost. It includes the necessary quarantine training um, for businesses that wish to do business in those areas. And of course, the enforcement of that quarantine, which currently resides with the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. 
not least of all for us, um, we are worried about the homeowner or property owner's um, costs and expenses of treatments. And of course, for me, the biggest cost here is going to be to the environment. Um, the pesticides that are used for controlling spotted lanternfly are not selectives for spotted lanternfly. They're going to affect any insect, including beneficials, which feed on that tree and or um, come in contact with the sap. The um, area garden centers have to spend money inspecting uh, retail goods, and especially when it comes in and also when it goes out. And of course, there's good stories from, from the Winchester area of swarming spotted lanternflies where thousands of them have built up on the property. And in front of the building, but the building entrances too, which is a big mess, you know, and a big concern for those people that are doing that work. So the timeline in Virginia has been uh, kind of interesting. In 2014, there was a first detection in Pennsylvania. Um, extension outreach in Virginia, being right next to Pennsylvania, um, was initiated in 2014 as well. Um, and of course, sure enough, by 2018, we had the first detection in Winchester, Virginia. We initiated an extension, um, extensive outreach to, um, to communities and commodity producers um, that might be affected by spotted lantern fly. Citizen science program training um, targeted volunteers um, who wish to be engaged in the control and scouting uh, for these insects. And of course, the VDACs immediately took up work to establish regulatory actions um, to control the spread of these insects. Aren't they beautiful? They're, they're, they're really nice. Um, but where it's bad, it is very, very bad. Um, businesses and industries, um, distribution and manufacturing plants have to do self-inspection, inspecting the trucks, inspecting the products that they're selling and bringing in. Garden centers have to treat for adults and inspect the materials as it is sold. There, is, uh, there are four positive vineyards in Northern Virginia, and they did start insecticide applications this fall. Um, Virginia vineyards are on high alert. And of course, Virginia wine is a prized commodity and a major business in Virginia. So this is a great concern. Another great business in Virginia are the apple production. And that, those are on high alert also because the, um, the smooth bark trees are very attractive to spotted lantern fly. Homeowners have the nuisance of honeydew, sooty mold, stinking insects, general gross factor of all of this, and the high numbers of relatively large, large insects that just cause a mess. And I'm particularly thinking in my area about the um, multifamily units, the condo associations and the apartment complex that have to deal with this stuff all across the entire property. Um, some buildings saw huge aggregations of the insects um, in front of the buildings and to the point where they had to take brooms out and brush them off the sidewalk in order to allow people to come into the front door. And of course, they frequently get calls um, to extension about this. And um, <laughs> in the Frederick area, extension got many calls from people who believed that the government was not showing up to remove every insect from their property. Well, that's problematic also, and all of it is for a very pretty bag. The quarantine training, um, the permits are issued for Virginia Department of Agriculture, and we believe um, that the um, side yards where train cars are idled when they're not in use um, is a major way that the insect is spreading. Um, the, case of the Ilanthus being such an aggressive um, weed plant uh, is such that the Ilanthus often um, occupies those areas of the, um, of the, you know, where cars idled, where low maintenance um, landscape areas. And of course the insects are there and they lay eight masses on any smooth surface. At any rate, the spotted lantern fly inspection training um, does, uh, is conducted by VDAX and by extension in some areas. And both Virginia and Pennsylvania have been doing this since 2018. Major costs associated with that. Again, um, the food crops 
um, that we know and love are all at risk from this plant. Uh, again, it doesn't kill the plant, but it weakens the plant. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, I'm very concerned about the overapplication of insects. The ick factor um, is my little word for the, what happens when you have infestations like this. Um, what's for somebody to do? They actually in Pennsylvania were selling and giving away fly swatters um, that, um, that had spotted lantern on them. And the word from Pennsylvania is squash it, kill it, smash it, um, get rid of it. But there's no way you're going to do that with all of these, uh, with a population that builds up to these kind of numbers. And by the way, this is a maple tree. So um, many bee kills do occur also um, while, um, while treating uh, for these plants. Anything that's blooming is going to be, that's treated with a systemic insecticide, it's going to have bee kill associated with it. The other interesting thing about the infestations like this one here are that as the excrement of the insect builds up and the sap runs, they attract wasp and they attract things like yellow jackets that feed on the sap, the sugary sap that comes out of the tree, as well as on the um, spotted lanternflies themselves. Other damage that's done by spotted lanternfly includes um, these, the sooty mold buildup. And the sooty mold is this black stuff on these leaves right here. Um, sooty mold is, is a fungal growth that grows on the sugary rich um, excrement that the insect produces. And a lot of it um, builds up. And the trees like, like this one in the past picture that have huge infestations also developed a white colored um, fermented sort of uh, alcohol rich um, um, fermentation process on the sooty mold at the base of the trees where it builds up, where the sooty mold builds up quickly um, that attracts many uh, singing insects. Another thing about that picture with the grapes, can you imagine that the grapes having to be picked at the time when the spotted lantern flies are, um, are coming out as adults is such that they, and they're gonna be adults all the way through October, uh, is such that it'd be difficult to not um, get spotted lantern flies into the harvest. Damage here again, um, weeping sap on trees, which we already talked about, um, but this is present uh, and attracts a lot of in other insects. And of course it, it provides a way for a fungal organism to get into the plant. Flagging, um, which is referred to the picture on the right side. This is a walnut tree and you can see the yellowing of the leaves. Um, that is because the cambium layer of the tree has been affected and the tree is showing uh, distress. Um, because of the spotted lanternfly feeding on, on it. So again, this is uh, 2021 when it was last updated and you can see the spread down through Maryland, um, down into DC, into Virginia, and up into New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York. That was September, 2021. And this is the potential spread of spotted lanternfly in the United States, all the way down to Florida, all the way out to Kansas, uh, Nebraska and so on, and even in California. And the California growers are very, very concerned because this is a huge pest for the grape crops. What would we do without our California wines, okay? So um, uh, people are on high alert. And right now they're, they're on alert in California all the way down to um, Georgia and so on. Okay, um, Kirsten, we have just one question that was prompted by your... Uh list of trees that are affected <coughs> by the spotted lantern fly. Someone asked if beech trees, because they have thin bark, are also a target. And what about holly? Um, ho both of those trees are on the list of uh, being recognized as being, uh, of having egg masses. I don't think we need to, to um, do much more. Where's the, where's the writer from? Uh, hang on, I'll check. It doesn't say. Okay, all right. So the, the, in our area, the major thing that we need to be engaged in right now is inspection. And looking for egg masses, looking for the, for the, uh, for the mm -hmm. nymphs, looking for the adults. Um, and we need to be on the lookout for those. If the trees are already infested, if you find egg masses, and in this next section, we're gonna look around what they look like. Um, you need to be scraping those egg masses off. 
okay, and reporting those egg mass um, to, to me, if you're in Arlington, Alexandria, or to your local extension office if you're in some other area. Um, if you find that, they, that the spotted lanternfly has infested them, you can actually um, begin, initiate treatment to protect your trees. Okay, the uh, person just uh, mentioned that she's from Fairfax County. Ah, Fairfax County. Fairfax County found um, dead ones, I believe, in um, shipments of Christmas trees that were at a local nursery. Um, beyond that, I think they're searching for egg masses this far, and um, the county has taken uh, a, a, an aggressive approach to um, searching for these insects this year. Okay, that's it for the questions. Thank you. All right. So here's a timeline, a calendar of sorts uh, for you to kind of keep in mind. Um, the eggs can be found from January, or they overwinter as eggs in, in the egg stage. And those eggs look like mud masses on tree trunks and branches. Um, the, once the eggs are laid, and we'll see another picture later on um, where the, the eggs have hatched. And you can see on the left side here, uh, these holes are where the eggs have hatched and um, already, and the covering of mud-like covering on the eggs um, is, is gradually dispensed with. The eggs hatch out into early season nymphs, uh, which are quite small. Um, uh, we will look at that. The, um, um, the, late, the early stage nymphs um, graduate into this later, start, later stage nymphs um, as they, this is the fourth instar, the fourth stage. And there are th a couple of other um, early stage nymphs before this. This is considered a late um, stage nymph. And the nymph, um, as, it, as it produces the adult, as it morphs into an adult, and this picture on the lower right shows the adult um, emerging from the body of the nymph. It's very interesting to see. Um, and then this nymph, um, this adult, uh, eventually pumps its wings out and it becomes this beautiful adult insect. The nymphs are active from April, from when they first hatch in some areas, all the way to um, late August. And the overlap with the emergence of the adults from July on to then. And of course the adults are present until first frost. So you can be looking for all of that. Egg hatch and the first nymph occurs at 200 degree days. Now degree days are a, a, a measurement of accumulated heat units. Uh, accumulated heat units can be uh, a marker uh, for the emergence of many insects. It's not so good for plant diseases, but for insect emergence, both the plant flowering dates as well as insect emergence require a certain accumulation of heat. It has nothing to do with the actual calendar. It has to do with the temperature and the accumulated the number of days at which degree days accumulate. Now, in our area, uh, it's a little bit earlier than it is in Winchester or Front Royal, Virginia, and even Fairfax, Virginia, for that matter, because the um, the it's warmer here. It's it's um, we have we're next to the big Potomac River Valley. We uh, have a built environment that collects heat, and so the degree day accumulation is much earlier in urban areas than it is in rural areas, and certainly further north. Uh, for example, Winchester, the two hundred degree day accumulation doesn't occur until May fourth at the National Airport here in in uh, by the Potomac River. Degree day accumulation of 200 is, comes at the 12th of April. So we are right at the time where if we are going to see nymphs emerge from egg masses, we should be looking for it right here, right now. And of course, everything else is somewhere in between. And you can find um, uh, um, North America, um, 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 Oceanic Administration has a degree day calculator and you can figure out what your area, what the degree day accumulation is for your area simply by using the, um, the chart. Um, 
the eggs when they first hatch um, to the first nymph, they're going to be four millimeters. So they're almost, they're really small, three sixteenths of an inch long. Um, the second stage travels up to six millimeters or a quarter inch long. And of course the third stage uh, before the last one, which is the red stage, um, is going to graduate to nine millimeters or three eighths inch long. The difference between the second stage and the third stage is that there's a projection at the head, um, which looks, which is not there in the second stage. Now in this life cycle, they quickly jump or hop away if you touch them or come up to them and they're very difficult to catch. So nymph development uh, occurs from 200 degree days, again, April, May timeframe, all the way up to 1120 degree days. So that's what the overlap is showing on this calendar over here, okay? You can see that nymph development occurs all the way up into August. All right, quickly jump a half away. And then we have the fourth instar, which occurs in June and July, which is slightly bigger than a half inch long. And the projection is on the head again. You can see it here on the, um, the front of the head of the nymph. And of course, these also are the hoppers. And so they quickly jump or hop away. Um, this, is, this is called the fourth stage and is the one that's immediately before the, um, the adult emergence. The adults, um, don't hatch until 1,121 degree days had occurred in late, early July um, is when that it happens in the um, Northern Virginia area. We can expect it sooner here in um, Eastern, Eastern Virginia. Um, the adult spotted lantern fly, when they're on the trees, hold their wings vertically. And you can see the picture on the left and in the middle, uh, an illustration of this. These are about one inch long, uh, or about the width of a dime. This is um, um, the wings on the right side picture show the um, insect after landing, after it's been in flight. The abdomen is yellow, um, but it is covered by the wings almost always, and you don't see that very often. Okay. So in summary, you have the egg masses, um, from winter to April. And the egg masses, I apologize for the fuzziness of this photo, but you can see the egg masses um, look like smudges of dirt on the bark. And the egg masses can be found on trees, they can be found on rusty metal, uh, smooth metal, patio furniture, uh, anything that's smooth and, and flat. The late nymphs um, occur in July to September and the April to July timeframe is the, when the early nymphs are active. The July to first freeze is when the adults are active and they can be readily seen and, and actually caught. They, they, they fly, um, but when we went out to, to observe them a couple of years ago, we were able to catch them in our hands. Now, this is really important because um, people need to be educated about what these insects look like. Um, not every insect with bright colors is spotted lanternfly. These other insects on this page are native insects that are often mistaken. I don't know whether you remember here, but in Arlington, we had the um, giant hogweed, um, 15 minutes of fame about five years ago. And people were asked to report giant hogweed. We did a lot of education on what giant hogweed looked like. Well, we got reports from folks that sent in 12 different kinds of plants that were mistakenly identified as, as giant hogweed. And the identification first, eradication second is an important message. If you have not had, um, your neighbors have not had training on to understand what these guys look like, um, you could lose a lot of valuable insects here. Spotted lantern fly, of course, is, are these right here. And you can see maybe why, um, some of these others will, might be mistaken for the spotted lantern fly. Another piece of identification that needs to be done is that of the um, ailanthus. And the eradication of ailanthus is one of the control techniques um, that is promoted for the, to reduce the spread of spotted lantern fly. On the left side, we have ailanthus or, or tree of heaven. Um, 
If you have driven along any piece of I-66 or I-81, you know that this tree is rampant, growing there in the median strips and on the edges. Uh, it generally has 12 to 24 um, pairs of opposite leaflets. This is a compound leaf, okay? These other trees also have compound leaves and you can see the similarity here. This is staghorn sumac. This is wing sumac, a much smaller plant with and it gets its name from the wing projections on the side of the stems. Then we have black walnut, okay? And black walnut um, has a very strong um, scent when it's crushed, um, which is also true of the ailanthus. And the ailanthus, when you crush and smell, it has been described as the smell of peanut butter. Um, it's also called stink tree because it has a very um, strong odor of a musky odor almost. Um, black walnut also has that musky odor. It's very different. And um, it is definitely has is a shorter leaf, a shorter compound leaf with fewer leaflets. And of course, butternut, which is also a member of the walnut family, um, can, has, can be mistaken for this too. The flower is, is very different from tree to tree. This is Ilanthus here on the left. Um, you have a composite flower. Um, that's very similar um, on the sumacs. And of course, the flowers on the walnut and the butternut are very different as well. So those can be torn apart. The, um, <clears throat> I should also mention that the leaf um, of the ailanthus has glands at the base of the leaflets. Every single one of these leaves has a little raised spot um, that, um, is um, has a little, is a gland, is a scent gland. The fruit is very different also. Um, these are walnuts over here on the far right. And of course the sumac has a cluster of uh, very like um, fruit um, in the middle. And of course the Atlantis fruit is also very different that can easily be told apart if you learn to, to st you study it. The life stage um, uh, in summer again is the egg masses uh, to the adult. Um, you can see here the adult, the egg masses on the tree and to the untrained eye, the egg masses are very difficult to identify. You can see the weeping sap from the feeding of the adults and the egg masses that are freshly covered with this muddy, shiny material, which eventually dulls with age. On the right side, you see the adult surrounded by um, um, uh, uh, an older egg mass and a, a younger egg mass right here, which has not been covered up yet. The life stage of the nymphs um, is, is uh, the colors are very beautiful on the late stage nymphs. And of course on the um, early stage nymphs, it's just black and white. Here is a picture of the Atlantis tree um, with a number of the late stage nymphs covering it. And again, they feed on the tree by inserting a stylus um, that's a, that's after, that is almost as long as their body into the plant, and uh, and they feed on the emerging uh, plant sap. The adult um, is is beautiful. The the female is slightly larger than the male, and this picture right here is a picture of a box, a sample box. And it's hard to tell real life size from the photos, um, but of a, of a box, but I put the dime in there for reference. And if you have a dime in your pocket, you can take it out and have it in your pocket as an idea of how big they are. The adult female and the wings have been spread so that you can see the colors uh, in the sample box. And of course the adult male is much, much smaller. You could also tell that the, uh, the yellow coloration on the abdomen is different from the female to the male. Uh, and of course, the this is actually should be the fourth instar right here um, with the um, the red nymphs here. Any questions about uh, identification of either the host or the insect itself? Colleen? Kirsten, we have one question. If you find sooty mold, does that mean you have a spotted lanternfly problem? No, that's a great question. Um, um, spot, sooty mold um, can be a, a sign of infestation of any insect that's feeding on the sap. Um, normally that sooty mold presence here without the presence of 
of spotted lanternfly would indicate that there is a, an infestation in the plant of either scale, scale insects, or in later summer, um, aphids. Both of these feed on the sap of the plants and, um, and can be excrement from those insects will cause to be mold. Um, and of course, hollies are a major um, um, site place for sooty mold to develop and any, any, any plant, any plant that has uh, a scale infestation will have um, sooty mold. Okay, thank you. We can go on. All right. Um, so the bottom line is keep an eye out for it and report it if you find it. Um, we want you to kill it, but we would also like to be able to see it um, relatively intact so we can identify it. If you can catch it, put it in a container um, and bring it to your extension office, take a picture, and I will show you some more ways that you can report it, uh, that photos, photos to your local extension, to our local extension office anyway. Kirsten, sorry to interrupt, but someone asked, just asked if you could show the slide of the adult on the tree and the full color spread. It was two slides ago, I believe. I think it's that one, yeah. That one there? Yeah. This, um, this one is a um, picture of the adult here on the right side, of course, has its wings spread out. Uh, to show the yellow on the abdomen. This is a, um, a, a gravid female. This is a female that's been mated and is getting ready to lay eggs. Ordinarily, they would not be as fat uh, as this, um, but this very, um, how should I say, luscious um, spread <laughs> is very attractive to yellow jackets. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. So there are some, Insects here and birds. We have praying mantis that will um, certainly feed on spotted lanternfly here. Um, but again, they're not going to do a very good job of consuming very many of them. Uh, if you have a major infestation, um, they will, we will have lots of praying mantis around, uh, but they're not going to put a dent in the main population. Birds do feed on um, spotted lanternfly and um, the one of the traps that are used for spotted lanternfly is a sticky trap. And those have been discontinued for many reasons, but one of them is that birds going after the spotted lanternfly that are stuck on the, these sticky traps have gotten themselves stuck on the sticky traps. So sticky traps are never a good idea for any kind of pest. Um, spiders um, feed on the spotted lanternfly. You can imagine that's a pretty big meal for a spider. Uh, so again, they're not going to do uh, a major job on, uh, on, on, on spotted lanternfly populations. But you know, the reports have just indicated that we're, we're due to have a, um, uh, a, a, a giant spider somehow uh, infest our area. Um, they're supposed to be dropping from the sky, traveling on wind currents. So maybe they will put a dent in the spotted lanternfly population. Um, the wasp family insects are attracted to not only the insect itself late in the season, um, yellow jackets are looking for a protein meal. They use the protein for, to, to sustain themselves for egg laying. And they also um, you know, will be attracted to the sap of the tree uh, that's, that's pouring down the outside of the tree for the sugar food there. Uh, there is a fungus, uh, Bovaria, uh, that is, um, has been found to have limited effect, um, which causes the insects to um, be um, um, infested with the fungal the organism that kills them. None of these are very effective, okay? And in a major infestation, they're not even going to be um, part of the solution. Inspection is key. Um, you need to check every smooth substrate um, surrounding trees that are ailanthus, um, check the wax, check lumber uh, or dunnage, that is, you know, the um, materials that are being transported, like rocks over here in the left hand picture. Um, lumber um, is a major place, stones. We need to um, look, learn to see these egg masses. You know, when it's up close, like the picture on the lower left, um, it's easy to find them. If there's a color difference like this on the stone on the upper right, um, you can also see the difference. On the lower right, it's a little bit harder to see. 
That's an egg mass right there on that piece of lumber that you would think was a piece of mud or other material if you didn't know what to look for. Also, um, um, the egg masses it will have a sheltered um, type of situation like this where you have lots of, uh, you know, have a gap between stones that are stacked up here. Those stones need to be inspected and that's part of the quarantine process. Uh, controls are going to be up to us to uh, remove egg masses off of trees. They can be scraped off into a jar. They can be scraped off into an alcohol or a hand um, uh, sanitizer material to be able to kill them. Again, if you find egg masses, make sure you report them and take them to your local extension office for positive identification. The sticky traps here in this picture are covered with wire. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, it's not dense enough wire. It traps the insects that are traveling up the tree from the bottom, and you can see many adults on that. Uh, but it also um, prevents, does not prevent, the wire cage is there to prevent birds from um, getting stuck on the sticky trap. Sticky traps, if they're used like this, have to be covered with a mesh that's small enough to prevent birds from accessing the stickiness. And you have to also take these off and check the insects that are on those uh, traps on a regular basis and replace them. Finally, if you are, if we become infested with uh, spotted lanternfly, we need to take care to work with a licensed pesticide applicator um, who can, um, who will use um, chemical sprays um, legally and appropriately to prevent uh, um, these damage from the other to other organisms. Cooperative extension, uh, almost every agriculture natural resources agent in the state has some percentage of time committed to education about spotted lanternfly. Um, I believe the top picture shows Adria Bordas, who's the extension agent in Fairfax County with her spotted lanternfly costume. And the picture on the lower bottom shows uh, the extension agent for commercial horticulture in Loudoun County, Beth Sastre. Um, who is taking a selfie out in the field where she's educating uh, Christmas tree growers. Outreach methods include citizen science, media interviews, presentations at grower meetings, uh, pesticide recertifications that we uh, engage with uh, providing to VDAX licensed uh, pesticide applicators. Um, and of course, new agents um, in population areas need to be mentored and that all takes time. Particularly what takes time is the 1,300 to 1,600 inquiries per year that the three counties around Winchester experienced, uh, have experienced for the last few years. Now in an area which is already infested, you don't need to report it, um, but in an area like ours, Fairfax County, we need to report new sightings of, of spotted lanternflies so that the VDAS can ascertain, VDAS, Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, um, can ascertain that the identification of the pest. Extension specialists um, at Virginia Tech um, are engaged with specific education to various commodity growers. Um, grapes um, is Douglas Pfeiffer. Um, ornamentals, uh, Alejandro Del Pozo is, is, is taking charge of the education there. And of course, on Christmas trees, we have Eric Gay, who's the main entomologist for extension at Virginia Tech and um, tree diligence. Um, citizen science programs uh, were for volunteers who are out doing this work to find um, spotted lanternfly infestations have, um, have been very, very effective um, at finding insects, inspecting ailanthus trees, reporting ailanthus trees, and letting the, the local government know and extension know about their presence. Um, from 18, 2018 to 2022, we had um, um, many volunteers throughout these areas, master gardeners, master naturalists, um, who have played a key role in supporting the, um, the, the screening for spotted lanternfly. And we are doing that actively in Arlington and Alexandria, uh, even though we're not yellow on the map. <laughs> um, maybe we're too small to count over there. But um, outreach materials are provided from the specialist to us. Most of them are paid for by VDAX. And one of them that I just picked up recently is this one here on the lower right. Um, this is a circle trap, which is fastened on its lower level to the tree itself. 
Uh, the insects crawl up into the trap, which, is, which encloses them. They continue up the, uh, up the trap to this uh, collar at the top where a plastic bag, in this case, it's a little cup. We have a plastic bag that's attached so that um, that can be um, emptied out and inspected. We were advised to empty that bag on a regular basis so they wouldn't have insect soup down there. Here we have um, some information about what you can do in your area um, to help report uh, both Atlantis tree, trees and spotted lantern fly sightings. In Arlington and Alexandria, our extension line is 228-6414, or you can call the Master Gardener Help Desk, contact the Master Gardener Help Desk at uh, M-G-A-R-L-A-L-E-X gmail.com. The trees themselves will be vital, uh, was vital knowledge for monitoring and potential control, not only of the tree, but also of the um, uh, insect sightings that may be attracted to them. Um, if you wish to use our Qualtrics survey, there is a form here that can be used to report local spotted lanternfly sightings in Arlington and Alexandria with. Um, there are lots and lots of resources at the Virginia Tech Spotted Lanternfly page, and I hope that you will educate yourself about them because this is going to be a serious problem here. Um, here is the spread forecast of spotted lanternfly. This is the current situation with uh, in isolated infestations throughout Virginia, as well as in New York, all of New York, and even a little corner of Ohio, Indiana, even uh, over there where they're out there. So this is the current level of infestation. These are projected levels in 2032, um, with infestations spreading all the way up to the Canada line. And by the way, this doesn't know any, any geographical boundaries, but, um, um, we don't have data from, 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 uh, from Canada. Uh, of course, most of Virginia at that point will be infested with, uh, with spotted lantern fly, and it will travel all the way over to Ohio and Indiana. And of course, beyond that, the estimate for 2045 is even worse with most of the fruit producing areas of Michigan being engulfed by spotted lantern fly. So this is a sad situation. Um, we're going to introduce a lot of pesticides and over time, we may see the development of uh, biological controls um, that will help us control this without pesticides. But right now we don't have um, effective biological controls that do enough work to control the population of spotted lantern fly. Virginia Department of Agriculture Consumer Services statement on the treatment chemical treatment of properties um, is that the, um, is the, they have a goal of only of slowing the spread. They're not talking about eradication. They're talking about slowing the spread. Um, and there is a uh, generally invested areas, Project County and City of Winchester. And those are the only areas where they are considering doing um, state sponsored um, spraying programs. The, um, Idea of it again is to slow the spread, but if they're only spraying the, in my opinion, if they're only spraying the heavily infested areas, the insect has long gone past those areas and is ready to continue to spread. They don't fly long distances. Um, again, they are spreading more effectively with human help um, through nursery plants, through stone, um, through travel of the of, of, of transportation cars and of course in, um, in, in as a hitchhikers in vehicles, okay? So take a picture, collect a sample, take them to your local extension office. If, you, if you're in the United States, you can find your local extension office um, at that link below there. And um, if, you are, if you are very local, you can come into our offices and get um, final confirmation of their find. Bottom line is if you find it, you need to kill it. You can cut it and keep it relatively intact simply by saving it in alcohol or hand sanitizer. Um, and of course, otherwise we need to destroy it, especially we need to remove the egg masses. So far they treated 400 some odd properties in 2021. So will be sure to be more in 2022 unless they just give up. 
Um, target treatment sites, again, have a high risk of movement out of the quarantine areas or sites that have hotline populations. So um, the USDA is going to be working on treating some tree of heaven with herbicide, but the treatments are going to include um, contact sprays with bifenthrin. Um, another product that is used is dinotefran, which is treated as in, in systemic insecticide, which treats the ailanthus trees, um, which takes up the, the process, the insecticide into the tree itself and kills the insects that feed on it. This is, this is um, generally a problematic treatment because it's a portion of least of last resort. Systemic insecticides um, kill many insects that it doesn't intend to kill. And so we have to be very concerned about what is, what's happening with our fruit crops. Cooperative extension has many effective resources for you in Virginia and of course in Pennsylvania as well. Um, Best practices for spotted lanternfly on yards and landscapes um, is part of that. The um, document that's on the lower left um, is the one I showed you on the slide that shows the expectation of when you can expect to see the nymphs in, in Virginia and the adults. And um, of course, there's a very good information there about what the citizens can do. Report, 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 smash, stamp, squash. Okay. Um, the Department of Forestry in Virginia also is supporting um, um, a col collaborative effort. Um, there are forest health program staff who are doing um, what they can to help get the word out to, to their population and doing training of uh, Department of Forestry employees. Uh, they're doing visual surveys for egg masses and of course providing, I, they're also providing educational materials. And one of the best ones I have there's this one here called Ilanthus control methods. And Ilanthus is a tricky tree to kill. Um, but if you wish to, if you have Ilanthus on your property, you need to report it um, and to extension so that we can get the word to the local government about the presence of Ilanthus and, um, and um, perhaps even eradicate everything on one of the, some of the larger Ilanthus trees so that we can use them as a trap crop. Uh, having one Atlantis tree and nothing else will allow the population of spotted lantern fly to be concentrated um, and attracted to that one tree so that we can see it more readily. In summary, there is a lot of good work being done by a lot of people. There's a fantastic volunteer effort, especially for master gardeners and master naturalists in these different areas. Um, there's a very limited distribution of that at this time as far as lantern fly in Virginia. But again, where it has gotten established, it is um, a serious problem. Um, no vines and vineyards have been killed by spotted lantern fly. Um, uh, no trees become killed by spotted lantern fly, but it is a, um, a, a real possible major impact for commodity growers. So if you're a nursery grower, a fruit producer, or a Christmas tree grower, and these are all major industries in Virginia, they're gonna, your prices are gonna go up for those products because they're gonna have to be worrying about inspecting for spotted land and fire, they're gonna have to be worrying about treating for spotted land and fire so the quality of the products don't go down. Um, the homeowners who live in invested areas um, have a real quality of life impact um, having to deal with an insect that is primarily a nuisance insect. All right, so um, this is a, a problem. In Arlington and Alexandria, we want to make reports um, at the Quartrix survey that has been created just for Virginia, for, for our area. And you need to make sure that you're reporting your sighting in the county in which you live. Uh, we can't do much except pass on a sighting um, in, in Richmond or in Virginia Beach. But if you will contact your local extension office and make the report there, they will be very glad to hear from you. Um, once the, in areas in which there is no present um, spotted lanternfly established, the Virginia ID lab requires a physical sample from the agent like me, who's working at the front lines of the stuff. Okay, so once it's, once it's confirmed by us as a possible and probable sample, I need to send that sample to Virginia Tech um, to get a positive sample 
those staff then notify VDAX before the sample to USDA for very official confirmation. Okay, our address at our local extension office is listed there. And anybody is always welcome. The Master Gardener Help Desk. Um, the, again, the email is there. It's staffed in person um, every weekday from, from nine to noon. That's the end of my presentation. Um, I want to really thank Colleen Kennedy and Julie Hansen Swanson for their facilitation today. Um, again, the Extension Master Gardener Help Desk is willing and able to help you with all kinds of queries, not just a spotted lanternfly, but also with um, pest insects on vegetable crops, your landscape crops, and, and other kinds, even your household pests. So the phone number is up there for, the, for our office here, Extension Help Desk. And of course, the um, uh, email is there also for, um, for that help desk as well. So I want to thank you all for coming. I especially want to thank um, Julie and Colleen for their help with the questions today. And if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to um, talk at length. OK, Kirsten, I got uh, someone asked about commercial apple growing, but I think you answered that. That's as much a concern as the vineyards are. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, the apple crops, the grape crops, you know, the commodities that we produce here, even Christmas trees are of major concern in Virginia because they are ready for harvest at a time when the adult spotted lanternfly is, is out there and about. And, and in infested areas, uh, as the picture showed you, they infest the same plants, uh, the plants um, that, um, that need to be um, um, harvested. And that's a major way for the spread of these insects. And so, um, you know, they, they end up in shipping containers, they end up in, in pickler's baskets, they end up in embedded in the interior of Christmas trees where they can't be um, seen readily. Um, so um, this, is, this is a major concern in Virginia. Okay, thank you. Um, another question was, how do you actually remove the egg mass from a tree? And once you do, what should you do with it? Do you throw it away? Do you put it in alcohol and take it in? Or what's the process? Okay, well, if you live in an area where they are not yet established, you need to bring that sample, that physical sample into your local extension office or Department of Forestry office or somewhere where they can take that sample and confirm that it really is spotted lanternfly. Um, if, you, if you live in an area where, um, where it, is, it is already established, just kill it. And basically you can have any kind of container, a plastic bag. Um, I think the picture showed somebody with a plastic container. Um, and you, could, you can use that plastic container, anything that will scrape the egg mass off the tree cleanly. Um, I would not advise using, um, you know, anything like a razor blade or something like that, but certainly you can use the flat edge of a knife blade to scrape it off the tree and make sure you get it off and get it into the, um, into the container. Okay, I think that, that uh, finishes the questions and uh, as several people have commented on what a wonderful and informative and important presentation this was. Thank you. Courtney Turner just put a really great suggestion in the chat box about using an old gift card mm -hmm. or other plastic um, piece to scrape the item off the tree because it will not damage the tree that way. And um, we hope that um, you all who have learned something today and can take it with you and use it uh, no matter where you are. Again, if you are in an area that does not have um, an established population of these insects, you need to uh, this becomes very, very important that you report egg masses, nymphs, adults, um, to, to somebody, okay? Um, your local extension, and all the counties in Northern Virginia have extension offices, and most of the counties in Virginia have their own extension, some are shared in other counties, but look up your local extension office and report. Um, even, even if you're not sure, even if you just suspect that it might be uh, spotted lanternfly, you're not even sure of the identification, you can submit that sample and they can, um, they can verify or deny that sample. But scrape it off into alcohol, egg masses, um, 
And again, right now in Northern Virginia and in the more urban areas, we're looking now for the early stage NIMPs uh, as well as the egg masses. Thanks very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you all for showing up today.